quick note before we get started. While this video was designed for week 8 of remote learning, the information and techniques can be used by anyone. Hi, it's Ms. Boren here to walk you through this week's lesson. This is part two of our two-week series on narratives. This week, you'll be using your brainstorming ideas from the previous lesson to tell your story through bookmaking. Bookmaking, also called book arts, is the process of creating books. I studied book arts when I was in college, and it's still one of my favorite ways to make art. Are you ready to learn more? Books are everywhere. People have been writing books for centuries. Here's a book from the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore that is over a thousand years old. This book would have been written and assembled by hand. It would have been one of a kind and treasured by its owner. A lot has changed since this book was made. Today, many artists who make books work with printers and publishers so they can print and sell their books to lots of people. Some artists, like Chris Van Allsburg, write and illustrate books that can be found in stores and libraries all across the country. The books we're going to look at more closely this week are made by artists who choose to showcase the beauty of the book as an object. This means they care about the way the book is put together just as much as they care about what goes on its pages. In this week's Artist Spotlight, you will examine several examples of book arts. These artists discover creative ways to transform the book structure into a work of art. Take a look! Swim Team by Natalie Andrewson is an example of a zine. A zine is a self-published, handmade book made up of images and text. Zines are often created with simple materials to cut down on costs of making a book. Artists can reproduce their zine many times by making photocopies of the pages and folding them into a flippable book. How does the artist create unity in this zine? In the quest for our birth, artist Betsy Davids shows how ordinary materials can be transformed to make a book. Her white pages are photocopies that can be made on a home printer. What everyday object did she use to make the structure of this book? Another way artists create books is by celebrating the book as a sculptural object. Here, the artist Laura Davidson creates a case that looks like a book, but when you open it up, you can see there's more to it. This set was created after Davidson visited a magician's house. She created an accordion book of his bookshelf, as well as individual illustrations of tricks and illusions. Now it's your turn to make a book. You will be using your brainstorming sketches from last week as the inspiration for your book. The choice board has three options for your book's structure. They are zine, paperback, and accordion. I'm going to show you how to make each one so you can choose the one that works best to tell your story. Let's get started. Option one is a zine. Start with a blank piece of paper and fold it in half hot dog style. Then unfold. Now fold it in half again, this time hamburger style. Then unfold again. Take the short edges of the paper and fold them so that they meet in the middle of the paper. When you unfold your paper, it should look like this. Next, we are going to make a slit in the center. I used a highlighter to show you where we are going to cut. Pinch the middle of the paper and cut along the highlighted fold. Now pinch the middle folds on either side of the slit. Pull them out and down so that your paper makes an X shape like this. Turn the folds of your X to all face the same way in order to turn it into a book.
If you want to add a cover to your zine, you can use construction paper, wrapping paper, or other colorful paper. To create your cover, open your zine and lay it on top of your colorful paper. I like to make my cover a little bit bigger than the pages. Cut a rectangle that is slightly larger than the size of your open zine. Then fold your cover paper in half and glue it to the outside pages of your zine. Choice two is a paperback book. You will need at least two blank papers to make your pages and a third page to make your cover. If you want a decorative cover, you can use scrapbook paper, construction paper, wrapping paper, or other papers around your house. To get started, fold the paper for your pages in half. Then fold the paper for your cover in half. Lay your folded pages on top of your folded cover. Cut out your cover so that it is slightly larger than your pages. Then tuck your pages inside of the folded cover and use a stapler to hold it all together. If you don't have a stapler, you can also use a hole punch and brads or ribbon to bind or hold your book together. Choice three is an accordion book with an optional cover. Start with a plain piece of paper. Fold it in half hot dog style and then cut it in half along your fold. Use tape or glue to turn your two halves into one long paper like this. To make your accordion, first fold the paper in half. Then open it back up and fold the short edges of the paper so that they meet in the center. Now take the edges in the center of the paper and fold them in half so that they touch the outside edges of the paper. Flip your book over and fold the edges to meet in the middle. To make your cover, keep your accordion book folded and lay it over the top of your cover paper. Trace a rectangle that is slightly larger than your pages. If your cover paper is thin enough, you can fold it in half to cut out both covers at once. Once you've cut out your two covers, use glue or tape to attach them to the end pages of your accordion. After you choose and create your book structure, Use your brainstorming ideas from last week's lesson to tell your story on the pages of your book.